Welcome to the Mitten Mysteries Podcast, hosted by Haley V. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Mint Mysteries Podcast. I'm your host, Haley V. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you are new here, we like to talk about all things creepy, strange, and unusual. Anything weird that happens here in the Mitten State, this is what we talk about here on this podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you guys go ahead and follow us over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We are literally everywhere. So if you guys want to follow us over there for extra content, then go ahead and follow us over there on our other social pages. They are all under the Mitten Mysteries. Also, if you could leave us a five-star review anywhere you're listening from today, that would be amazing. And if you're feeling a little fancy, you can go ahead and leave us a written review telling us what your name is and where you're listening from today and what you love about the show. And one last thing before we get into today's topics is if you guys happen to have any ghost stories or legends or any cool stories that you would like our listeners to listen to, I would love it if you guys would send them to themittenmysteries at gmail.com. So that way I can read them out loud to our listeners and share about stories and topics or legends that maybe a lot of people here from Michigan didn't know about. All right, well, that's enough with the intro. Let's go ahead and get into today's show. Hey, everyone. I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend this weekend. I know I did. It was absolutely insane. I had the most incredible experience. My husband and I got invited to go uh, to the grand opening of the Imagine 8 haunted theater. This theater was built in like the early 1900s, like 1920s, I believe. This theater was built around 1927 and it was used as like a playhouse and then it got remodeled in like the 1980s into a movie theater. We got to experience the Ghost on the Balcony haunted attraction at the Birmingham 8 Imagine Theater. We got to meet James Jude Courtney and he is the actor that plays in all the Halloween movies and that was cool. We got a couple pictures with him, me and my husband. My dad actually went too, and so he got some pictures. So it was really cool to have that experience. We got to go upstairs into like the uh, media area where it was pretty much this area where they allowed all the media and the content creators and the news channels to kind of hang out in like this little like lounge area. And then we got to go into the haunted attraction first and kind of see firsthand what it was going to be like for everybody else. It was definitely interesting. I got scared so bad in one of the parts of the haunted attraction. We were walking through, I won't spoil too much, but we were like walking through this area and it's like all Christmas trees and it's smoky and you can't see anything but you got like the flashing lights oh man it was it was good I I got scared really good (laughs) I got scared a couple times like I I do not like jump scares and for someone that likes like spooky stuff like I do the jump scares are what get me um I can't do the jump scares (laughs) my husband I feel like was laughing at me the whole entire time but yeah no it was a lot of fun so if you're in the Birmingham area in Michigan and you want to go to like a haunted experience this October, definitely check them out. It was a lot of fun. The history behind the Birmingham 8 Theater, like I said, it was built in the 1920s and it was remodeled into a movie theater in the 80s, but a lot of guests have reported paranormal encounters like they've seen apparitions they've heard sounds of disembodied voices footsteps as well as experiencing lights flickering doors opening and closing by themselves objects being moved by something they cannot see and employees working at the old theater late at night they also reported a strange presence and experienced unexplained feelings of paranoia paranoia (laughs) unexplained feelings of paranoia and fear in certain areas of the building which is insane so i was watching this one interview of uh uh, the manager that has worked there for a really long time i think it was around like 20 years or something he said that one day he was working and you can actually see this i think this video on youtube if you search up the imagine theaters i seen this video and he was talking about how he was working one night late at night or something like that like after closing and he was working and then all of a sudden he heard children above him running around upstairs so he radioed down to like his 
other you know colleagues and he's like hey like we got children up here like can someone go check it out so someone went to go check it out and there was no one there there's no children which is insane there's also been reports of like in the basement hearing the sounds of what could possibly be like a bowling alley now back in like the early 1930s 40s 50s there was supposedly like a bowling alley that used to be down in the basement area but they ended up sealing all of the walls that were down there so no one can see any of the old equipment or anything that used to be there so it's just basically talks of there being an old bowling alley down there so yeah, really fun, really cool, really spooky, creepy, haunted jump scares. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, make sure to check out The Ghosts on the Balcony in Birmingham, Michigan this October. They run all through October, I think up until October 31st, Halloween. So I thought it would be a lot of fun if we could talk today all about the Michigan creepy legends. Now over on my TikTok page, I post a lot of my kind of haunted, creepy, weird videos over there but I also do post them on the Mitten Mysteries TikTok page as well. But I've been talking a lot about the legends of Michigan and the ghost stories, pretty much all the fun, kind of creepy, weird stuff for the month of October. So I thought, what not a better time to tell you guys all these spooky ghost legends than now because it's October, it's October 4th. <laughs> Well, today is October 4th when I'm recording this, but you probably won't hear it until maybe the 5th or 6th. So that is what we're going to be talking about today. And the first topic we are going to talk about is the legend of Michigan's Dogman. Now, this legend of the Michigan Dogman is pretty much like Michigan's own werewolf. There's been multiple accounts of seeing this creature. It's basically like half human, half dog pretty much so it's said to be seven feet tall with the body of a man and a dog's head that wax that wax <laughs> that walks around upright on its hind legs this story reminds a lot of people kind of about like sasquatch and the chupacabra and there's also a native american legend that is called the wendigo or wendigo i'm not sure how to pronounce that but so this legend first kind of started off with some stories from northern Michigan in the Lower Peninsula, and a lot of the tales of this beast were seen by lumberjacks in Wexford County, Michigan. Now this is kind of back a long time ago in like the 1800s, like around 1887 is when these stories started to pop up, but I know that a lot of these legends of the Michigan Dogman date way back way before the 1800s. Like I said before, the Native Americans had a lot of these legends back from their time, and there's a bunch of stories, like I said before, about the Winnedago. Winnedago? Winnedago? I'm sorry, if anyone knows how to say that correctly, please correct me on that one. But yeah, no, th these legends date back way before, I feel like, the 1800s. So the legend states that this creature is hiding out in northern lower Michigan, and it's basically covered by the Huron-Manistee National Forest. A lot of the times the sightings of this creature have been scattered all over the state, including the Upper Peninsula, but a majority of them seem to be from the northwest part of the Lower Peninsula, especially around like Traverse City, like I said before. There was a song that popularized the dog man in northern Michigan, and this song took off in 1987 thanks to disc jockey Steve Cook for the radio station WTCM FM, and he had an idea for an April Fool's Day prank to compose a song about a man-like wolf that stalks the forest. And you can find this video on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. But this is where the tale of the lumberjack sightings of the beast came from. So I think that a lot of those stories about the lumberjacks were just stemmed from this song and they weren't true. Cook told WWMT Channel 3 News in 2016 that I came up with the creature of the dog man, a half man, half dog, and developed it into a poem. It was kind of an alchemation of all these creatures I've heard about as a kid and stories that I've heard about. So unexpectedly, the song took a huge hit and the subject of many requests in the coming weeks and months. So Cook also started to hear from people who claimed that the legend was no laughing matter and it really was true. And then he got phone calls from people saying that it's no joke, it's the real thing, that it actually happened, that people have seen this creature. Cook stated that he doesn't believe the legend himself. He thinks it's basically baloney. He said that he's a skeptic because of the way that this whole thing started pretty much. He said that he watched it evolve over the years, but he doesn't believe that this dog man creature is actually out there, but he does believe in other things out there that he cannot see with his own eyes, but just not the dog man. <laughs> he made a song about it, but he still doesn't believe it. 
Now, the eyewitness sightings and true believers of this legend really do stick to their guns about this legend and they really do think that it's true. Now, there have been other reports from outside of Michigan stating that they do have a dog-like creature slash werewolf type beast that roams in their woods as well. There's been stories from coast to coast, from northern woods of Maine to the coast of California, people claiming to see this dog-like creature with human characteristics. And a lot of people have been interviewed as eyewitnesses, and they are very hesitant to speak about it because they don't want to get made fun of, or they don't want their name out there and basically get bombarded with, you know, a bunch of hate for believing in this legend. But a lot of people do believe that this legend is true. A lot of people that have met this creature or have seen this creature with their own eyes, they kind of go into a state of shock when they see it. They don't know how to explain it. Their brain can't comprehend what they are seeing. They're seeing, I mean, just imagine you're walking out in the woods, just taking like a little stroll and you come across this seven foot tall dog with a human body with a dog like head just staring back at you. And it's also said that this dog-like creature has glowing eyes, pretty much just glow-in-the-dark eyes. So imagine a seven-foot-tall dog-like human creature standing over you with glowing eyes. I mean, you're going to go into a state of shock. So, I mean, I don't know. It's hard for me to believe it, but there's a lot of things that I don't understand and I can't put my mind to it it's very hard for me to understand but I mean I think it's possible people and scientists are finding brand new things every single day new creatures every day so why not you know I I don't know I I think it might be true it could possibly be true I don't know let me know if you think that the legend of the dog man is true because I think it might be Anyway, let's continue. So a lot of the common factors with these sightings have been pretty much at night. They only happen at night and many of the tales of the encounters are pretty quick. They don't last very long, but a lot of them have stated that they were driving down the street of like this dark road and nobody else was around. It was just them in the vehicle and they would pass by what looks like the dog man creature and they would see it out of the corner of like the car where the headlights are it'll catch a glimpse of this animal and it would get spooked and it would run away or they have seen the creature crossing the road and standing on the shoulder before it vanishes from sight there have been many other encounters that are much more crazy than just seeing it in the woods a lot of people have stated that they've been attacked by this beast and many of the hunters and campers that have had an expected run-ins with the creature. They have stated that this creature has super big hands slash paws and claws. Paws and claws. <laughs> hey, that would be a good beer name. Paws and claws. Anyway, so yeah, they have really big, long claws. And a lot of people have experienced at their house in that area, they have had large claw marks and bite marks on their homes or property. So this creature had came to their house and clawed and bit up their homes and property, and then just vanished. Another interesting detail that many of the eyewitnesses have claimed is that the creature can switch between walking on two feet and then walking on four feet really easily. So imagine like a dog walking on all fours, but then switching, standing up, standing on its hind legs. So I guess that would be kind of like a kangaroo because kangaroos can do that too. They look kind of human, don't they? They can walk on their hind legs or walk on all fours like a dog. There's been supposedly a video captured on film. It's a very popular film on YouTube. You can probably search Dogman Michigan and you would find it. And it's pretty much a three minute video of this creature that's seen in the distance in like the woods. It's very hard to see. It looks like it was captured on like a old Motorola or something, but (laughs) yeah, but the footage ended up being fake. It's not real. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts about what you think about the Michigan's dog man. Do you guys believe that the Michigan dog man is true? Is it a true legend? Do you think that something could possibly be out there like that? I just know that me and my husband love to go camping and we always go up north. So it'd be very interesting if we seen that creature, man. I, I wouldn't even know what to do. I would try to take pictures. I'd try to film it. That'd be like my first instinct. No, I wouldn't even run. That, is that bad that my first instinct, if I see something weird like that, is to take pictures and video? 
Because, I mean, at least if something happens to me, I'll have those and someone can find it. So the next legend slash ghost story we're going to talk about is Hell's Bridge. So the legend of Hell's Bridge takes place in a place called Algoma Township in Michigan. This is pretty much now a little metal footbridge and it's hidden in the Michigan woods crossing over the Rogue River near Rockford. This is kind of how the story goes. So now back in the day, there was some children that came up missing in the town. And so the townsmen organized a search party to go into the woods to look for them. But unfortunately, they did not want to leave their other children unattended, so they left these kids with a man that they really trusted back in the town. His name was Mr. Frisk, and so he was in charge of keeping the children safe and and watching them while the parents went to go look for the other missing children. Claiming that he did not want to leave any of the children to wander off, Mr. Frisk tied the children together and marched them into the woods. Once at the location of this bridge, now the bridge back in the day was a stone bridge. It was not like the metal bridge is today. So it was this big stone bridge, really tall stone bridge that was there. He led these kids to this bridge area and they were all tied up with some rope. So Mr. Frisk tied all these children together and he tied them with some rope and he led them into the woods. Now at this location, the kids started to notice this really rancid smell like basically like the smell of death. And after they had mentioned this to Mr. Frisk, he uncovered the pile of leaves and branches that revealed the bodies of the other missing children of the town. When the kids seen this, they screamed on the top of their lungs, but unfortunately the search party was on the opposite side of the town at the time, so they could not hear the screams of the children. So Mr. Frisk knew that the search party was off in the other direction, and that is why he took them to this place. So he proceeded to kill the children one by one and dump their bodies into the Rogue River. Later, when the townspeople realized that the kids and Mr. Frisk were missing when they got back, they searched along the river until they came upon the spot and saw the bodies of all the children in the water. Following Frisk's footprints, they found him covered in blood, babbling about how the devil coaxed him into these killings. The man grabbed the rope that Frisk had used to tie up all the children and proceeded to hang him right then and there from the nearby stone footbridge. The legend says that the rope snapped and the current took his body downstream and it was never found. And it's never been found to this day. Now, whether an evil entity made Frisk do this to the kids, the townspeople didn't care. They grabbed his body and the rope that he had used to tie the children up and instead hung him off the bridge with it. Legend says that after he died, the water swelled, snapped the rope, and took his body away. Now, to this day, a lot of people have experienced the evil forces that have influenced Frisk, and it still inhibits the area, so if you go there, you can possibly see the faces of the murdered children under the water from time to time. You can hear a creepy laugh in the woods if you're there at midnight. You can see glowing red eyes that have been seen in the woods and also on the footbridge, along with the sounds and screams and laughing of young children late at night. Now, tubers that have also swam with their tubes through this river, they have claimed that they have had unseen hands trying to pull them into the water. So, like, could you imagine you're just floating down the river, like, you know, hanging out with, like, your little boozy koozie with, like, your friends and some music, and you're just, you know, hanging out, and all of a sudden, you start to feel hands underneath you, and they try to pull you under. Like, Becky over here can think, like, oh, that's just, you know, Eric over there pulling me under, trying to play a joke on me. And you look down and see, like, faces of these murdered children trying to pull you into the water. Yeah, no, not my vibe. The stone bridge has been long gone, and it's been replaced with a metal bridge, and it's been dubbed Hell's Bridge by locals. Now, this bridge is located within the woods of Algoma Township, northwest of Rockford. To feel the most effect of this scary, creepy area, you have to go alone or with a small group, so like a partner, but don't go with a big, giant group. I have not personally been to Hell's Bridge yet. It's definitely on my creepy, spooky season bucket list. I would love to travel there soon, if not this year, maybe next year, because I would love to experience something if something is going on over there. All right, so the next little ghost story slash legend we're going to talk about is all about the Bell Telephone Company. The Michigan Bell Telephone Company is a haunted building in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it is said to be haunted by the ghost of a married couple who came to a tragic end on the site many, many years ago. The Michigan Bell Telephone Company was built on the site of an old mansion called the Judd White House, and it was built in 1907. It was the home of a married couple named Warren and Virginia Randall. 
Now, it was said that Randall had a very good job and he was working as a brakeman on the Grand Rapids and Indiana Railroad, but however, they had only been living in Michigan for one year when Warren was met with a horrible accident at work and he was run over by the freaking train he was working on. Although he survived the accident, he lost his leg and it was replaced with a wooden one. The loss of one of his limbs really made him pretty much go down into a deep depression and he began acting really strange and kind of paranoid. So the couple's happy marriage was really on like rocky ground and Warren started accusing his wife of cheating on him and having affairs with men who had more legs than he did apparently. That's actually really sad. So their arguments often became violent and the police sometimes had to be called to the house to break up one of their fights. At one stage, Warren was arrested when he chased his wife down an alley while sharpening a straight razor and threatening her life and threatening to kill her. Virginia didn't press charges against him and the case was dropped, but however, later that summer, she finally found the courage to leave him. And on one night in the summer of 1910, Warren somehow convinced Virginia into coming back to him at the house. So when she went into the house, the couple had one last argument and Warren ended up taking off his wooden leg and beating his wife to death with it. Then he took out the straight razor that he had threatened his wife with once before and slashed his throat with it. So after he killed her, he killed himself with the straight razor. The dis- disappearance of the couple went unnoticed for two entire weeks until workers from the office building next door eventually noticed a horrible stench coming from the house and reported it. When police broke open the door, they were nearly overcome by the noxious smell of decaying flesh. Inside, they discovered the two rotting corpses laying side by side. They were so blackened with decay that they could only be identified by Warren Randall's wooden leg. The tragic and disturbing tale of the Randall's murders and suicide quickly spread around the city and the house was never occupied again. People who lived nearby said that the house was so haunted and many reported seeing strange lights and hearing unexplained sounds coming from the old house. Those who were brave enough to go inside and investigate claimed that they could hear a strange tap 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 noise in the bedroom where the couple died. They said that it was the sound of Warren Randall's wooden leg thumping up and down. Others claim that they heard the blood-curdling screams of a woman. They said it sounded like the voice of Virginia, and it was pretty much like begging her husband not to kill her. Every child who grew up in the area was told by their parents not to play near the old abandoned house, and 10 years later, the house was purchased by the local phone company and was tore down. On the site, they built the Michigan Bell Telephone Company office building in 1924. Ever since the new building was built, residents of Grand Rapids, Michigan started receiving odd phone calls late at night. When the calls were eventually traced, they were found to be coming from within the phone company's office building. So a lot of people believe that the creepy ghost encounters or strange paranormal phenomenon has been coming from these two ghosts that were the ghosts of the couple that lived in the old abandoned house before the bell tower was built in this area so that's kind of creepy you get like phantom phone calls (laughs) or shall i say getting ghosted (laughs) so yeah that is the legend and story of the michigan bell telephone company building that is all of the legends and ghost stories that i have for you today but if you guys are interested in learning more about michigan legends and scary stories i will go ahead and continue to make these episodes i really do enjoy learning more and more about all these creepy legends from all over michigan so if you enjoy them too make sure you guys give this podcast a five star rating and write down in the review section what part of this podcast you enjoyed the most what story did you enjoy and if you have any more stories that you would like for me to talk about then go ahead and also leave them in the review section and i will go ahead and i will put those in the next episode make sure you guys subscribe over here on this podcast as well as following us on all of our other social medias you can follow us at the mitten mysteries on all platforms and if you want to send us a creepy story legend or any experience you may have go ahead and send it to the mitten mysteries at gmail.com and i would love to read them to our viewers I cannot wait to come back and talk all about mine and my husband's anniversary trip because we are going up north and we're staying at a very haunted hotel. So we will talk to you guys all about that next week. But I hope you guys have a great weekend and I look forward to hearing from you guys and talking to you guys next episode. Hope you guys have a great weekend and stay spooky, y'all.